everyone, and welcome down to episode 143 of the Down South Photo Show with me, Brendan Waits, here in Ocean Grove, Victoria, Australia. And the guy on your other screen, or in your other ear if you're listening to the podcast, it's Cam Blake in Hobart, Tasmania, Australia. Welcome home. Where am I? I don't know. Hobart. Yeah, Hobart. Guess what? So. Where are you? What are you? What time zone is it? It's I'm crazy. Still, I'm still in America, mate. See? Yeehaw, yeehaw. Well, I can see you're in front of Monument Valley. Yeah, yeah. The sun's setting just about now, which is pretty accurate, actually. It's about that's the right not, time. Not too far off for when we're yeah, recording so, this. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. So um, I know I am back home, which is nice. Um, thank you for giving me the break of 12 hours since I've been home. Good. <laughs> hey, we got, we've, got, we've got people demanding that we put a show out. We've also got people saying, don't put it out there. Oh, really? Oh, damn. Yeah. Okay, well, maybe we should. Well, maybe that'll do. That's enough. How long did that go for? A minute? It'll be easy to time code this one. Yeah, thank you for that. Thanks for joining. Uh, no, I'm back. I'm, I'm back in Australia. I got back just yesterday. Yes. Uh, that was good. Uh, massive, massive trip, which no doubt we'll touch on during the show. Yes. Uh, saw your face over there in America. Um, yes, that was weird. So, yeah, I saw a few things about you that I learned on the on this little trip, we may not bring them up. Hey, when we go traveling together, you know, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, baby. Yeah, that, there was a few things that stayed in Vegas. There was a, a group <laughs> chat between yourself and Five Star Dan that had a lot of things that stayed in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, it might have been, uh, it might have been Dan and I letting our hair down at the end of that trip. Yeah, it could have been. And that I was, was fun. And I was just hanging on. You just. <laughs> hey, um, we tried, but I don't think we're at a thousand subs yet, are we? We're getting there. Uh, thank you to everyone who has liked, followed, and shared the channel around. Thanks to our US subscribers that we've met along the way over there. Yeah. Um, we are closing in on 950 subs, so thank you very much. Uh, our goal to reach 1,000 by the end of the year is under the pump a wee bit, but I reckon we can do it. 943 subs at the moment. Is it? 943. Okay, so that's closing in on 950, so that's good. Oh, that, that sticker that we stuck on the side of the rail. on that Was it still there? Which is still there. We checked it. Yeah, yeah, we checked Excellent. it. Um, we that'll that'll bring us up to a thousand real oh, quick. Really quick. That's right, because it was only I think it was pretty much the only sticker on that whole rail, wasn't it? It was the only sticker on that place where we put that sticker, and that's um, right. The rest of the rail, which is five hundred meters long, had a couple of stickers on it. So yeah, maybe like about four and a half thousand. But anyway, someone will find it and they'll scan the QR code and they'll tune into this madness, which is yeah, the Down South Photo Show. So, um, let's start with your background. Oh, my background, right? Yeah. Uh, so my background, you know where this is. You've been there. You've stood in that exact spot. I have stood in that exact spot and taken that photo. Basically. Yes. This is uh, Monument Valley, the classic view of Monument Valley. It has seen per all the Westerns and every single Western that's ever been made. There's a horse that runs along this track somewhere. Um, so this is on the trip that uh, you and I didn't do. This is on the second trip, this one. Second time around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, no, it's not. It might be your one. I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> They all blur into one. Blur into For one. those of you playing along at home, Cam did two tours of Utah, one with me and Five Star Dan, and one with him and just Five Star Dan, and yeah. I came back home to run my business. But uh, I, I reckon said... that's I reckon that is on the first one. I think I, I, think I, think it I do remember one, saying Yeah, because we, we had a moon in the second one. Uh, so, yeah, this Monument Valley, sunset, beautiful spot. Uh, it was a really nice evening, that one. And we got the little car trails of all the four-wheel drive trails coming through. Uh, returning back to their base, I guess, at the, at the end of the day. So beautiful spot from the lookout. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And uh, I think everyone was pretty happy with their shots from that moment. That was one of those places, and it happened a lot along the trip, um, where mm. I stood there and went, this is just ridiculous. Like it's you've yeah. seen it a thousand times, as you say, in movies and westerns and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you stood there and you're looking at it. I think the thing that surprised me was the size of it. Like, yeah. It's big. <laughs> like the size of this shot or the size of the places? It's just all the places we went to. Yeah. Um, you know, you sort of – it's good that you've got the the car headlights in the in the foreground there because it does give a wee sense of scale. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's crazy, like how, how – just how gigantic – and the fact that you can go on the other side of it where the Forrest Gump Road is. Yes, yes. Um, where we, where we did, did that At leading least, up to it. Yeah, it, it is a big – like this particular spot is quite big. Yeah. Um, mm. And those those rock pillars there, they they're a good, I don't know, twenty, thirty floors stories high. They're they're big, yeah. But they're not just little sand piles. They're massive. No, rock they are gigantic. There, two there, and there was another one out here, and there was another three or four out here. And, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So uh, Let, let's 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 really deconstruct that because when we were there, 
there wasn't a lot of cloud around. So this, the sunset was, you know, it was just a flat sunset. It was just the sky gradient was going to change basically. Yeah. And I remember when we got there and straight away, I'm like, well, this is going to glow. This is just going to have that afterglow. And I think a few of the people on the trip were like, mm, I'm not so sure. Is this going to, how's this going to play? You know, but everyone was absolutely stoked when we stayed yeah. longer. Yeah. When that purpley blue afterglow comes in and it just yeah. lights up. Um, the same thing. I, I can tell you now, I did a month in the US and I think I saw two days of cloud. Yeah. We, we didn't have a cloud on the second trip apart from Arches National Park. We had a bit more in there again. Yep. Uh, the weather was just phenomenal for driving. Not great for photography as such during the middle of the day, but uh, driving around is just incredible. Yeah. We said that a couple of times that the, the weather was almost too good. Um, yeah. given that we were there on a photography tour, yeah. um, you know, you, you do occasionally yearn for a bit of cloud cover, but geez, you know, you, you take the weather we got over yeah. crap weather. So well, yeah, that's right. You did, you wouldn't want to be driving through rain and crap for two yeah. weeks to a bit. So uh, just, just briefly, my background is that now that you like have it. to forgive me because I've only been back for two weeks, so I haven't had a chance to edit any photos. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember where I took that photo, Cam? Uh, I believe it's outside the car, driving along in the back seat on the Pretty way much. between Vegas and LA. Between LA and Vegas, that's right. And this is actually stationary. We actually used the facilities there, and uh, oh, yes, literally, there's there's a this is taken from the door of the toilet block. Yeah, <laughs> but it was the first time I'd sort of seen one of those trees, whatever they're called. Um, Watch your tree. I guess it is, and and it just looked really cool. So I thought I'd just get that shot real quick and. Yeah, since then I only took you know a trillion photos on that trip, but I've yeah. I've edited a handful, a couple I did when we're on the road, um, but literally that memory card Why still hasn't come out of my so camera. Long to, Why does it take you so long to edit? Because I'm a busy man. But I I edited every night like half a dozen photos. Just yeah, I start I would start to edit every night and then just fall asleep face right. down in the laptop. <laughs> right. Right, okay. I'm an old dude, remember. It's funny. That's also interesting to know that you do some of your best work just hanging out the doors of toilet blocks too. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. Is that, that's not that's not bad for out of the door of a toilet block. Uh, yeah. No. It was. Um. It, it was. It was pretty phenomenal. The. Um. Like I was saying, the the thing that I couldn't get over was the size of the place, but also there's a lot of people there, Cam. Mm. I mean, that comes as a surprise to no one because 150 million, I believe. Well, there's, there's just a lot of people there. And and that surprised me. Like how many, like you would see people all the time. And you, there was always a town within, yeah. you know, here in Australia, we can, like, we go to the outback here. Yeah. You, know, you could you could drive for a couple of days and not find a town. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Whereas in the States, even though the land masses are very similar size, it just... I mean, obviously, there's areas like pure desert where you don't get many places, but it just felt like you were never sort of too far from civilization in the US. Yeah, you're always not far from somewhere like a, a little town or, a, but then also like you're driving along and you think, oh, yeah, we're in the middle of nowhere and this big town, like Vegas is a classic example of that. It is, yeah. You drive along, you're like, oh, this is all just desert and it's crap. Oh, hang on, there's a massive <laughs> whole town, like, you know, 10 million people or whatever it is. A massive city. Massive city that's uh, out of control, just in the middle of the desert. So, and, and I said this to you a couple of times, like, how does this place exist? Yes, yeah. Like, it is in the middle of the desert. The logistics to run a city there, and I understand that they've, you know, they've got their hydro with the Hoover Dam. They've also got um, Lots a of lot solar. of solar. Yeah. We saw the solar farms on the way in. That was pretty cool, actually. Yeah, um, um, yeah. It's, it's an amazing place. Um, something again that struck me. This is my third or fourth time to the States, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, they have such a reputation outside of America of being, you know, just obnoxious and loud and all yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah. We did not meet a Completely single... Completely untrue. Let's uh, let's yeah. bust that myth right now. How, how nice are they? Everywhere, everywhere you go, they're just nice people. Uh, and they like, yeah. they've got a fairly sense, similar sense of humour. They love the Australians. Like, so if you, yeah. you rock up and you're Australian, they're always really friendly. But you don't meet anyone over there that 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 that's a typical obnoxious American that, that you know the stereotype. In the not case. at all. No. Not at all. No. And no. and yeah, everyone was so welcoming and friendly. Yeah. And I think also when they worked out that we were Australians, there was there was this sort of bit of a connection, bit of a bond between us. So it was um, yeah, you, you're completely right. And even though like I left literally left on U.S. Election Day, yeah. um, you know and there was nothing like there was no, I didn't see any trouble. No one was upset. No one, 
I think yeah. I think I saw one guy walking through a crowd and he had an American flag. He's wrapped in the American flag and he did a couple of USAs. I also think he was half tanked. Well, that probably like, he should he should have joined us then. Because <laughs> he was day drinking, you know. So good luck to him. But I mean, other than that, it was yeah. and I was talking to, you know, hotel staff and things like that. And oh, you know, how about the election? Like, yeah. Well, okay. my um I can't remember if you remember we went to Walmart on the first trip to get some supplies on the way yes. through. And my postie, uh, Josh, he's a bit of a Spartan triathlon kind of guy. Yeah. And he wanted me to get these little energy drinks. So I had to get this box of little energy drinks that they can't right. ship to Australia without massive price. Anyway, uh, I saw him this morning and he goes, oh, thanks for that. And he goes, how was it? How was the election? I'm like, if, I said, if you didn't turn the TV on, you wouldn't have known there was an election on. Correct. Um, and no one, like everyone we spoke to, wasn't upset or disappointed. Like you said, there was no one out there for revenge or anything like that. People were just no. doing their day-to-day -day things. So... I think one thing I can take out of this trip, and and I think I'm not the only one with that, that the current state of the media worldwide yep. is completely up shit creek. They are yes. just out to sensationalize absolutely everything yeah. and get you fired up as a as a punter or as a person watching when 90% of it is just all hype. It's uh, all hype. It's all clickbait. It's all because they need eyeballs on their screens because they're up against you know the social media so they've got a so these places like cnn and fox and you know oh. they, they you're exactly right and the <laughs> sky news here yeah. in australia Go on, get, news. In the, get in the bin like yeah, fair dinkum no, what a pack right. of wankers it's just it's it's a disgrace really and yeah. you're right they're just fear-mongering and stirring up i don't uh, you know i will never watch sky news i never have but you know i can't, I, watch, I can't watch any tv anymore no. news wise because even all... even the commercial tv here like you know yeah, Channel Nine News, which was a staple of growing up when I was a yeah, kid, you know, you plonk and put the news on. Not anymore. It's all just crap. Brian, that crap. Brian Naylor, remember him? That's right. I do remember Brian Naylor. You know, yeah, it's just ri ridiculous. But anyway, we completely digress. This is a f photography yeah, show. We're, apparently. We're, we're, we're a photography media show. So um, don't listen to us either. How did you go with? I mean, I know how we went on our trip, but you had the second trip as well. How yeah. did you go with people getting photos? Like that's what they went on the trip for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, did you get a pretty positive response from the punters that went along? Yeah, everyone. Everyone. It took it took people a couple of days to get in the groove, but yep. uh, um, yeah, everyone that I know and everyone that we had on the trip, as far as I know. Uh, all said they got some great shots. We saw some great shots that they were producing. We set them up for some great shots when we were there. Um, so I would suggest if people walked away from that tour and got home and went, oh, I didn't really get any photos, either they were in a bubble on their own, just doing their own thing, not following us, or yep. they're, they're a really hard taskmaster master, marker. So yep. I think everyone got good shots. Where we went, like we had, you know, this behind us was good. Uh, we had some great sunsets and sunrises at Zion National Park. Uh, Bryce Canyon was good. That morning you guys went out and then came back and went out again. That was a bit of a yep. funny one. Yeah. Um, we got great conditions there the second time we went around. Uh, we got snowed on at Grand Canyon on our second trip. Um, there was like four inches of snow as we left. That was really cool. Um, Antelope, really? Canyon, Antelope Canyon was a highlight for everyone. Um, I think so. I, I don't I, think, I think anyone, yeah. yeah. Everyone walked out of that canyon with great shots. Yep. Um, and the one thing that was really interesting with that, um, especially Antelope Canyon was you don't need a tripod, just handhold, auto ISO. And there was a few people like, but oh, what about the noise and what about all that? I'm like, you don't worry about that. We'll fix it up later. But yeah. you're not going to, you can't take a tripod. So you've got to handhold it. This is how we do it. Yeah. And I don't think anyone worried about afterwards. Any, no one said, oh, they were too noisy or anything. Everyone just said, oh, yeah, I just added a bit of de noise and they were fine. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. No, it was, um, it was, it was pretty spectacular. And I think you're exactly right. If, if you don't walk away from a trip like that without, you know, a hundred amazing shots, yep. uh, you're not trying. It was, yeah, it, it was almost like some of the landscapes were a fish in a barrel. Like they were just too easy. Like they were just incredible light, incredible structure. Um, I, I, I sort yeah. of tend to, I tend to think that might be part of our hard work of putting people at the right spots at the right time. Well, credit, but... credit to you. Absolutely. But it was all, that's what I mean. Like if, if they, couldn't get good shots out of what you served up to them. Yeah. And um, yeah. Got, and, and, and mind you, no one complained at all about photos. Like everyone got amazing shots. No, the, and no, no, I'm no, still no, in that no. WhatsApp group that we that we did on the yes. first trip and the photos just kept coming and there's just yeah. and photo there's after photo and they're awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. And like got to the point, especially on the second trip around, um, we had a group um, from the same camera club. So they all sort of knew each other. 
Yep. Um, but it got to the point where I was just literally walking along and making sure, like, especially the the night we had here, I walked along and I said, how you going? I, they showed me, I said, fine, it's fine, don't touch it, it's good. It got yep. to the point where everyone was just really set up and ready to go with their settings. So, um, yeah, if, if they didn't get any good shots out of that, then either, like I said, they're either a super hard uh, marker of their own work uh, or they were pointing the different way because um, yeah. we got we got them in the right spots. We got them to the right places. We got the right time. Um, yeah, the only, the only the only time we probably made a little bit of a hiccup was that morning at uh, Bryce Canyon when it looked like it was going to be crap and you took part of the group back for breakfast and the yeah. other half well, I went down for a walk. But you yeah. guys got back out. You still got your shots. Oh, yeah. I mean, as, as it turned out, like we we got to have breakfast and then go back out into an yeah, amazing... Right. It, probably, it probably worked even better because, because you weren't Correct. standing cold like us. Yeah, half an hour at minus three degrees. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, and and sort of it was one of those things where we the further we drove into the park, yeah, knowing that we'd have to come back that distance and we had timing, we had to be careful with timing and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, but the the conditions just got better and better as the little storm front went through. We had a flurry of snow, we got a rainbow. Yeah. And some of the shots that have come out of that have been all some of them out of the moving car windows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, have been amazing. So well, that was the one. That was probably the one thing that I sort of struggled a bit as a tour leader on this trip was because there were so many great shots in between the great shots. As yeah, well. yeah. Um, and you're driving along, and it's like, oh, can we stop here? Like, well, we've got to get to here. That's right. So if we stop here, we miss the the the, the big hoo ha at the end of the day. That's right. Um, something that did work better the time that we were there versus the time that you were there was when we went to Mesa Arch. Yep. Um, we got um, we got the classic Mesa Arch shot yep. um, there, and that was good. We got there a tad earlier than the first trip. I'll put it up here. You yep. might be able to see it there now. Yep. Um, so we got there a little bit earlier at Mesa Arch, um, and a bit of wind was blowing all the sand around, so it was blowing all this dust up in the arch. Yeah, which brilliant. is really cool. Um, so we got we got lucky on the second tour, and then on the first tour we also got luckier than on some some of the second tour. So it was like hit and miss. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And that's what's going to happen. You're out in nature, you're driving around in weather, you you know, you're yeah. going to places that people haven't been before. So and I think that was the thing for me because I'd never been there. It was the wonder of, you know, discovering these places and going, "Holy smokes, like I, had, I saw you, know, you now I understand what the fuss is about." I saw you a few times where you were just sitting there just going, "What the?" <laughs> yeah. You just you were just like, "Whoa, this is a I, I made a real point of a couple of times just, you know, when I had a bit of downtime of like everyone was right taking photos, I would just separate myself just a wee bit yeah. and take it in. And don't not even looking through the camera. Just go, you know, you gotta you gotta absorb this because you know, you don't know when you're gonna be back there, you don't know what you know, things happen, you don't know whether you're gonna see that again. So yeah, I really that was that was that was pretty cool being able to see just to see those places. It was Zion National Park. Bloody hell. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good, isn't it? It is. Um, uh, it's it's all on steroids, and the infrastructure in all the parks as well was absolutely superb. The, par the parks, the parks over there do us to shame here. Like the way they run things, the way they merchandise it, the way they promote it. Um, yeah, everything everything is. Just, and yes, they've got three hundred and forty million people that yeah. live there to support that, and they pay taxes on it. But just simple things that Australia could do a little bit better with their national parks, you know, which won't cost the earth. Yeah. But just you know, even like the simple thing, like. Like and again, this is America over and over again. Everywhere you go, there's an American flag. You know, the hats all got America on it. Whatever it is, they're very patriotic about their own country, which is fantastic. Yeah, and they they sell that really well. So every national park, like the amount of money they must make through merchandise alone, yeah, is enough to sustain a fair bit of what they do in those parks. Yeah. Australia don't do that as well. Like I know here in Tassie, they got some little bits and pieces, but they could be they could be making a lot more money, I reckon, out of promoting. Uh, the parks through merchandise and stuff like that. So, well, case in point, you've only got to go to the Twelve Apostles, um, yeah. and they Lovely. have they have that little visitor center there. Mm. They sell ice creams. Yeah, that's right. That's it. There's nothing. Like, and and I know that there's people there who will be like, oh, I want a postcard, or I want a fridge yeah, magnet, or I want a t-shirt, or a hat, or a, or... or a rock blanket. <laughs> okay, Stephen, <laughs> didn't we have to turn back for a rock blanket? Uh. Were you turned for a rock blanket? No, no, no. We had to. We, we, yeah, I got the car going two minutes earlier so he could run in for his rock blanket. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, uh, but no, like that was said, awesome. It's an amazing spot, and um, yeah, we had great time, great fun. Um, uh, everyone was good, good fun, good natured. Um, yeah. 
there was a couple of little hiccups along the way, which is un that's not unnatural for big trips like that, yep. uh, which I dealt with, but and we dealt with. Um, how did you find hanging out with Five Star Dan for ten days? You guys seem to get on quite famously. Towards yeah, we end. had a good time. I mean, it, it, I, I think you know it was your show, so that the pressure was off us somewhat. Yeah. However, uh, I loved like when you said, "Hey, I need you to do this," and I just went and did it. Yeah, you know, that yeah. sort of stuff. I I really liked that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoyed the format. I think the way we did it on our trip with the three cars was really cool. Yeah. We did yeah. run into the odd hiccup where, you, you know, oh, shit, we can't park three cars there. But yeah, that, right. that happened maybe twice, three times. You know? right. And it was busy when we are in Zion in particular. Yeah. yeah. Um, but other than that, I really enjoyed the banter over the walkie-talkies and we'd talk to cars and, you know, people, yeah. you know, and, and a couple of days were long drives. So that was good to break up the drives um i love the rule about if you're a wingman or a wing person you can't go to sleep yeah 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 <laughs> well we had uh, on the second trip muriel hi muriel uh you still owe dan and i four beers oh uh, no did you not off a couple of times she nodded off a couple of times and then just kept nodding off and daniel's like you can move in the back and then she kept nodding off and not, so no, come, come on muriel i know lift your game a bit but um yeah, yeah no i think the first two of the three of us all went well uh, and the second tour, Dan and I was just back to normal, you know, like that. Yeah. The old, uh, the old, old boot, the, the old glove that fits nicely, you know, just put it back on. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, um, it's good. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll look back on that whole experience very fondly. So let's break down one of the things that we talked about just before, and that was Antelope Canyon. Yeah. Um, because I think we, you know, gun to our head, if we had to choose our favorite location, I think it would be Antelope. And I think most people would say that as well. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Antelope Canyon is in Arizona. Is that right? Did I get that right? In, in Page, Arizona. Page, Arizona. That's right. Um, and you can only go in there on a guided tour. You cannot personally access the place. You have to be on a guided tour. As a photographer, you cannot take a tripod into a canyon, which is straight away all you landscape photographers are going, what? <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's 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 a little bit um it's a little bit tricky from a photography point of view, but god damn is it worth it. Um so Antelope Canyon is what they call a slot canyon. So um up above you there is an opening to this canyon that is no more than a foot wide. Mm. Uh and it lets in a hell of a lot of natural light that Cam's showing you there. Yeah. It's um and the textures of the rocks because rain water comes through the slot at the top and eats away and opens up the canyon below. Uh and you walk through it and you look at it and you think this is man made. It has to be. Like it's just how is the floor so smooth and flat and yeah. sandy and it's nice. Yeah. And you swear that there's LED lights lighting the way. Yeah. But there's not. It's all just natural light coming in to that place. It's, it's um, amazing how, um, yeah, you're right. It's amazing how smooth. It's like there's concrete, and they've just gone and put sand over the top of it. Yeah, uh, like concrete path. Um, yeah, and the, and there's you know there's little piles of rocks up that rock pile that. Yes, you know, I got a shot. I know you didn't, and you got it the second time as well, where the light was just hitting it, and it's like, what? That's it looks so staged. It, uh, it looks like a little studio, and that's and it was just beautiful. The the light in there. On both trips was just incredible. Um, we yeah. got lucky with both of them, yeah. um, and, and and it's just one of those places where everywhere you shoot, yeah. uh, there's something going on. And um, I think it takes people a little bit to get their head around it as well. Um, and I think one of the, it's definitely one of the draw cards of the trip, even though it's not in Utah, which his whole trip is meant to be based on. Yeah, um, it's definitely one of those places made famous. You know, obviously made famous by Australian photographer Peter Lick, who sold the the phantom or the ghost phantom shot for That's X right. five million dollars. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people get in there and I think what they do is they, they get a little bit of that panic mode to start with, like, cause you're going through in a group and that group is usually separated by about five minutes before the next group. And you, so you get a bit of it, the place to yourself, but there's this little panic mode that kicks in and, Oh my God. Okay. I've only got like 10 minutes in here. I've got to get this done. When in fact, you've got almost an hour to yeah. walk through, take your time, take your photos. Um, on the second group we had, um, the, the guide kept saying, um, I was at first group or second one. one of them kept saying, like, take photos. I'm here. Like, take photos. Like, we're here. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone was just in awe of the place. And he, he kept saying, start taking some photos because there was a bit of that. There was a bit of, oh my God. I mean, yeah. I, I, I took like, I don't know, 500 photos through there, but I, maybe not that many, but there was a lot. 
but you were right. There was a lot of our group that were just like with their jaws on the floor. Yeah, going, like, oh, Look at this place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, get your camera out and take photos. And yeah. um, I must admit the second tour we did, we went on the first tour there, which was about uh, just before eight o'clock. Yeah. And, and there was only three groups going there at once. And we literally, like we, every, every spot, the guide's like, we can stay here as long as you want. We can yep. stay here as long as you want. And we got, and we got, um, it maybe it wasn't as bright, but the light was on a different angle. So it made it all different again. Yep. Um, but the, the Antelope Canyon tours were fantastic. They sort of guided us through really nicely and, uh, yeah, we'll be definitely doing that one again. That's for I sure. I can't remember the guy's name that took our trip. Um, I wish I could. Okay. He was a hell of a guy. He was such a lovely guy. So I want to say, yeah. I want to say Paul. So anyway. Um, he, he was a really nice guy. Now, what I've just done, you'll notice, is I've put up a background photo of Antelope. Yes. Now, this is done by uh, Adam Walker. Thank you, Adam, for letting us use your photo. Um, this is uh, inside Antelope Canyon. Now, Adam was on the, um, by the way, used with permission. Um, <laughs> this, yeah. yeah, he was on the WhatsApp group yesterday um, asking a question about this image. And his question were related directly to that area of the photo now i'm sorry for those people who are listening to the show but jump on youtube and check it out there's an area of the photo right there that is very very overexposed yeah uh, and of course it is because it's a slot canyon and all the light around these areas here it's it's low light yeah. uh, and you can see the fall off of the light even to get this detail down here that's quite dark to the naked eye down there yeah there's a there's, there's a large dynamic range of light in that massive canyon. if you're if you're pointing directly at the sunlight coming through the top, which is what Adam's done there. He's let a little bit of the direct skylight come through. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I would say it's a good 20 stops or so between that bright light and the shadows, if not more. Yep. Um, so you're asking a lot. You're asking a lot of um, – that was my phone ringing. Uh, you're asking a lot of your sensor – to actually pick up a fair bit of what's going on there. And you're right, Adam Adam had a really good question to the group about that really bright bit of uh, sunlight as to whether or not that's a good thing or not. Yeah, he wanted to, he asked, should I get rid of it? And yeah. and I, well, I can actually read you the response that I gave him because I'm so organised and have the WhatsApp group right in front of me. Please hold. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I don't. Um, yeah, so he, his point was, look, you know, do I need to get rid of this spot? My point was, well, it was there. Like, you know, it was, it, it that light source is what gives you the light in the canyon in the first place. Yeah. So you, so for me, I, I gave him four choices for what he could do to correct this image. Number one was to avoid it in your shots. Yeah. And, and I said in the, in the WhatsApp group, that's easy to say after the fact. And yeah. when you're there, it's like, Oh God, I've got to get this light. Like I've got to make it happen. You know? Yeah. So a little bit of the thought process can go out of the window, particularly because we were on an organized tour. We couldn't just pitch up and stop for an hour. No, that's right. <laughs> Excuse me. And get the and you know, get the light right and muck around and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. You know, as I say, option one was to to try and avoid those bright areas in your shop. Option two is to crop it out and rely on those gorgeous textures to be the hero. Yeah. Now that's what you've done in your shop behind you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You've so avoided I, I, the, the, the <laughs> actual light source. Yeah, so I guess out of hindsight and benefit of being there before, and, and we did mention this as well, and even the guide mentioned it on both times as well, is try not to get that direct light because it is so harsh coming through. Yeah. Um, but there is certain spots, the spot where Adam's shooting up, I think that that may even be the point where they say you can see the antelope's head happening yes. in there. Um, so what Adam probably needed to do there was just take a step to his left a bit and use that big sort of bit of rock that's in the middle to block out that light. But then again, on the other side, like you said, that's the light that's coming through. And yeah. I think I mentioned in the WhatsApp group as well, like I don't actually mind it coming through. It sort of, it sort of gives you that sort of, uh, sort of that, that light at the end of the tunnel type of feel where, yeah. you know, it sort of leads your way in that shot but, to that. But light. to me, that shot that Adam's got there, that's how it looked. That's yeah. To your naked eye, that's exactly what you could see. And yeah, you you almost had to sort of squint when you're looking up because your your eyes had adjusted for the canyon. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, and that's exactly what your camera's doing. It's adjusting for the light using, as Cam said, we used a lot of auto ISO in here because 
you know, you, you you would you would have areas of brighter areas, and you'd have areas that have shadow, and then you'd then you'd yeah. angle down and shoot straight into the canyon where I actually got my my favorite shot from the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so option three, I said to Adam, was to replace the blown out area. Now that was his suggestion straight off. He said, "Should I replace it? Mm. You can do that, um, but you know that area is blown to bits anyway." Um, so it'd be pretty easy to select that blown out area and use replacement. I mean, you could, you could drop a sky and you could drop a bit of blue in there if you wanted to. But my point was, um, it's going to come with a halo and you can see it. Yeah, it's yeah. right there. There's that halo right there. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. you know, affecting that, that bit of the rock there. So, um, that's really tricky to replace that and make it look natural. Yeah, and, and I um, think which... also that the light that's sort of spiraling down that shot as well there, if you put a blue sky there and you've got this sort of duller blue sky there and this bright light coming through, it looks a bit out of sync. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or a little bit look out of whack. So yeah. it's funny, on, on the second trip, uh, we had a few chats about um, sunlight and sun. And when we went to the Mesa Arch, um, for some reason people had this, and it wasn't the first time I'd heard it, had this sort of real fear of pointing their cameras towards the sun. Yeah. Like, you know, don't put, is it okay to shoot at the sun? I'm like, well, if you want to get that starburst coming through, yeah. you've got to be shooting at the sun. You know, is it okay to shoot up in the canyon and have that real bright light coming through onto my sensor? That There's no damage that can be done. Um, the one thing that people don't understand is that we can't get detail in the sun. The sun's yeah. this big ball of gas. It's There's no detail. The, the shots we see from NASA, that's obviously done with special... Um, telescopes and cameras and lenses and effects that where they can actually get all the detail of the, the sun exploding all its sun yeah. stuff off. But as photographers, we don't have detail in the sun. So if that blows out, like what's going on behind with Adam or the sun rises or the sun sets, so be it. That, that's fine. There's no detail there. But if, as long as you've got the starburst going on or you've got that nice light coming out from where Adam is on the, the shot there, then I don't mind that being blown out. So no. when we say watch your highlights and, and be careful of not blowing your highlights, it's the highlights for the, the, the light that's making the shot. And as I, I replied to Adam with some of those shots he put up from the internet, you know, all these bright spots that may be happening around the, the, the spiral of that canyon, if they are all blown out and losing detail, then you've got a problem. But that yeah. light in the middle, I, I don't mind that. It's, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. And which, which, was, which was option four that I gave him, which was leave it. Yeah. Um, you know, it is what it is. The time of day we were there, which was out of our control because we were on an organized tour, yeah. um, that dictated that the uh, light was harsh when we were there and it was necessary to give us the stunning ambient light. So, you know, you can't have one without the other in Antelope Canyon. You've got to have that blown out area to yeah. get that amazing light inside the canyon. Yeah. All, all, all that was suggested through that trip was um, by the guides and myself and you and Daniel is just try and get yourself out of that direct light and let the light filter around the walls as opposed to looking straight up there. I'm sure Adam's got a shot similar to this maybe in his repertoire where he's not shooting that direct light uh, from the top of the canyon. That would be the one that if he's worried about this one blowing out, then go and play around with that one. Um, don't don't try and replace that little bit of no. highlight with a blue or something. It's just going to look unnatural. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it, it's um, – Antelope Canyon was – It's. I don't find it that tricky. you just got to be patient. Yeah, I think, um, and trust trust your settings and trust your eye and um, and trust well, that you're going to get through there. To that end as well, um, if you're going to Antelope Canyon, uh, listeners, viewers, if you get if you do get the chance to go there, I highly recommend a very wide lens and a very bright lens. Now, case yeah. in point, on the second trip, Dan had my seven to fourteen f two point eight, which I used when I was in Antelope Canyon. Yeah. And I think he definitely got better shots a second time around. Yeah, he uh, <laughs> funny story about that. Um, he lost he, my lens, didn't he? He hasn't told me yet. Yeah, funny. No, no, no. Your lens is <laughs> um, he was very grateful that he was very shocked that you let him use it, actually, which is cool. Um, so a bad guy. I'm happy to help him out. <laughs> uh, um, on the way, on the way there, or something like that. He goes, oh, "I'll put this lens." I said, "That'd be fine." I said, "Just shoot two point eight or f four, whatever you know, and be wide angle." And Everyone was talking uh, white balance or something like that. Now Daniel knows that just chuck it, just chuck it on auto white balance. Yeah. But for some reason he's asked me. I'm like, is he trying again? I said, yeah, yeah. Put it on fluorescent. That'd be the one. <laughs> so we walked through the first. He didn't. Hundred, he did the first hundred meters of the can canyon, and he goes, "Geez, these, these, these photos are all purple, mate. They're really, <laughs> but it is sort of purple. Look, it's got some purple. Yeah, that's right. See, 
And then he showed me halfway. I'm like, he goes, you told me to put it on fluorescent. Yeah, for an idiot. I'm like, I was joking. I thought you knew. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you told me to do that. I'm like, you idiot. I said, it's raw. You can fix it. Don't worry. Yeah. But um, he went halfway through and he's like, why are my shots really purple? Um, so, yeah, uh, it's an amazing place. Um, yeah. And yeah, wide angle lens, uh, you know, fast lens, like 2.8 if you got one. If you got uh, it, yep. Auto ISO um, and, and just shoot. Like you get one, you get 45 minutes to walk through there. Don't, I, I found there was a couple of people trying to like create that master shot. Yeah, and no. by doing that, they were getting that maybe one shot, but they're missing a thousand others. So yeah. um, if you do go through there, take, use your time wisely, you know, do a bit of research before you go. You look like you're looking back up the canyon then. Um, cool? What's up there? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, use your time wisely and, um, and try and get those, um, get the shots as many as you can. Yeah, that's the thing. It's one thing because because we were photographers, we we're walking through to get photos. You got you've also just got to give yourself that few seconds just to enjoy it and oh, yeah, and, totally. you know, and drop the lens and go. This is an incredible work of nature yeah. that we're seeing here. Um, I just want to apologise because I'm very very backlit anyway, but now I'm even more so with Antelope Canyon behind me because we are recording during the day, which we don't normally do because I gave Cam a little sleep in so he could. Yeah, geez, <laughs> you're yeah. on the. Last night, or the day I, uh, when you, when I was getting out of the airport in LA, uh, LA, you're like, sorry, what time are we recording? I'm like, I'm not yep. even in the come on, yet. just relax. we need content. Let's get it up. Let's yeah. get things moving. So one thing we got on the second tour that we didn't get on the first tour. I'm just going to see if I can put it up there. Um, at the end of the canyon, uh, when you walk out, um, we didn't get this on the last trip, but because the, the light was different, uh, the light was almost coming down the back of the canyon, not as above as we were. Oh, okay. Yep, and we got we got this amazing glow at the very end. It was this this flame glow? I've never seen a color like this. It was yep. almost like it was almost like the rocks were being lit from behind or inside the walls. That's uh, very cool. It was very very cool. So we got lucky with that second trip a bit uh, time wise um, because the light was completely different to the first one. But um, yeah, an amazing spot. Uh, like I said, it's not technically in Utah, which is where ninety percent of this tour is hosted. Um, yeah. but it's definitely worth going there if you can um if you can get yourself there or come on one of our tours. We've got some spots uh on twenty twenty six if you want to come along. Twenty twenty six, gosh. We haven't even got no, to twenty twenty five yet. I went down to that Venice Beach and I didn't see that bus park there and I didn't see a palm tree and I didn't see yeah. that. When when you put that photo up, Daniel and I like, oh you prick, that's a great <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty happy with this. This was um this is long after I'd left the the tour and I was making my way back home and I was in LA. So I had I had a night in LA and um oops I just made my camera. Let me readjust that. Um I had a night in LA. So I I just got an Uber and I said take me to Venice Beach. I didn't know where I was. I was just like I was I was staying near the airport and I'm like just take me to Venice Beach. Um so he took me down there and then I sort of looked at a map and I went, oh, okay, that's where Santa Monica is. Okay, I can walk from Venice Beach to Santa Monica. It's about 4K. Yeah. Um, so I legged it and it was cool. Like, and the sun was going down and um, there was uh, the, I went to the skate bowl where all these, just these amazing skateboarders are doing their trick. This is a Monday night for God's sake. And the joint yeah. was jumping. Um, yeah. Sun was setting, the music was going. The smell of marijuana will never leave me. <laughs> How bad is it? Like everywhere you go, I, I actually thought, on the way back in our car, I said, "Has someone just like grown a dope plant in the front of our car, and it's just coming through the vents?" Because that's yeah, all I could. Uh, all pretty, the way, it was pretty stunning, wasn't it? Um, and yeah, so on the and and just stumbled on this magnificent old bus. Have a look at that thing. Yeah, very cool. Um, it's even sure got a cracked window, AI. which I like as well. What's that? Is that AI? Is it AI? <laughs> the only the only thing about it, Cam, is it's shot on my iPhone. At uh, yes. other than that, it was yeah, it was there and. Uh, I loved it. I was that was that was probably my most Americana photo that I took on the whole trip. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really, you know, people say LA, you can take it or leave it. I think it was really good. The hit I did, I just went there. I did the beach. I went yeah. up to Hollywood. I saw the Hollywood sign. I went to yeah. the comedy store, which was cool. Yeah. And then I went and saw the DeLorean from Back to the Future, and then I was happy. That's yeah, you, you were pretty <laughs> much gone. So yeah, I, like we we went to Venice Beach on the way back. We had a bit of time to spare, and we went there. and We were like, nah, this is crap. It was the wrong time of day. It was too like i went looking for that bus i couldn't find it so I came if you're going to do it do it at sunset so um yeah, that's my uh, my two yeah. cents worth on that right so awesome now we want to have um people we didn't say this off the top but it is almost december Ooh. and that can only mean one thing 
everyone gets grumpy and starts drinking too much and eating too much. Correct. No, we're going to have a December comp, Cameron. Speaking of eating too much, I actually lost weight on the in America. Well done. That's hard to do. Daniel did, but I did. I don't know. I came home. I was about a kilo and a half lighter. I'm like, right. Well, you did a lot of walking. It's all the salads I ate. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, all the salads. Uh, it was no, there was a fair bit of walking. Um, the December comp is yeah. the theme. Cameron is foreign. Foreign. Now that that is open to interpretation. You know, we like to have one word themes and foreign. Foreign. We want to see what you guys can come up with. Now, keep it clean, please. Don't go running over to our Facebook page right now and trying to enter. It won't be up until the first of December. So. Yep. Just bear that in mind. But um, get your thinking caps on. And of December 1, it'll be the linked, no, what do you call it? The pinned post on our Facebook page will yep. be sitting there for you to enter your foreign photos. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a prize. I'm going to do... I'm You're going gonna to do a prize. Your, that USA hat. No, that's that's going to come next. Look at that. It's fantastic. Route yeah, 66 that's awesome. USA. Uh, that's coming on every trip. That's our tour trip hat. Okay. Um, I'm going to give someone a print of somewhere in America. One of the shots we took, I'll, I'll print awesome. one up. What, A3 or something? Love it. There Double. you go. If if you would like to win a print from Cam, enter our December comp when the theme will be foreign and it will go up as of December 1. Now, we can't, I don't know, do we give away uh, next week's podcast? Do we tell people what we're actually, it's a bit of a, we've got a guest on next week. Oh, yeah, that's have got to that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he may very well be the biggest guest we've ever had. So uh, in terms of uh, YouTube subscribers that this gentleman has. He likes hats. It is, it is a gentleman. He does like hats. Um, and he's probably watching right now going, what the, f why am I doing this show? But anyway, he is, why he's on I, next week. Are we paying him? <laughs> oh, stop. Jesus. <laughs> that's, that's quite funny. Have you actually, uh, spoken, have you spoken to him or just on, or just on correspondence? Uh, correspondence, backwards and forwards, a few emails, left, right and centre. Do you reckon he's actually watched the shit that we put together? Probably not. And why would you? But no, trust me when I say this, guys, we've got a mega guest next week. So make sure you tune in for that. Now, a little bit of photography news while we're going through. Sony, God love them. Hey, how good Sony? have uh, announced the their new flagship. It's a big time for flagship cameras. Uh, Canon did their R1 last month, and Sony have now announced the A1 Mark II. Um, oh, it's, has Olympus, Olympus released anything yet? No. Uh, it's a – Olympus don't exist anymore. Uh, it's a lazy $11,000. Oh, that's good for the body yeah. lens, twin lens kit. Body only. Oh, so it must be 100 megapixels then. Yeah, no, it's not. Um, look, it's it's interesting that these companies are going toe to toe at roughly the same price point. What are the odds um, on cameras that have got almost identical specs? So, um, no, no I, I figured out what they're doing. Go on. So, they, first we had the megapixel race. Yes. Then we had the AI, comp, the AI race. Now we're yes. just having who can make it the most expensive race, and that finger was used internal, in, in, <laughs> um, <laughs> intentionally. Who, 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 Intentionally, who, who can make who can sell something for the highest price? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, okay. What so did, what, what, you know, what camera did you mainly shoot on in America? Uh, my iPhone. That, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, but at least mine's got a funny little red dot on the front. <laughs> I know, like it's it's really hard. For me, it's really hard for me to sit here and hang shit on these cameras when I bought what I bought. I get yes, that. it is. I get yes. that. It's very but difficult. Where <laughs> I'm going to try where. They, I think it goes wrong is these are, these are pretty much consumer cameras made and everyone's just going to go out and buy the best of the best. And they're just, yep. they're just like, at least with my camera, it's a bit unique and it's a bit more, you know, it's handmade and it's all put together and all that kind of stuff nicely. But these cameras are just consumer pro cameras yep. at $11,000 a pop. Like yep. 50, 50 megapixels, that's that's fine. 8K video, great. Yeah. Uh, it's got what? What else does it have? What? What? What's so good about this? It's going to cost eleven grand. I don't know. I, I, mean, I don't know. I honestly couldn't tell you. I mean, it's 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 probably got amazing build quality. It's probably got I don't know sixty frames per second in well, raw. Yeah, but I don't know because I've lost count of how many times I need that. Here you go. It's got eight and a half stops of image data. Look, light. look, we we do this often, Every time. and we we talk a lot of and, and and it's a bit it's a little bit tongue in cheek, but. The fact is, these cameras aren't for us, Cameron. They're not aimed at us. I mean, we, we don't need a Sony A1. No, no who does? Problem, I mean, the problem is the, the Joe yeah. Blow, the Joe Blow who walks on the street 
who wants to go buy a camera, they just kind of they just look at the price tag now. They don't look at the they don't look at the specs as such. They just look at the the price tag and go, well, I better get that one because it's the best one on the market. Yeah, and that's what these these camera retailers are doing. I've said this before. Um, I'm frustrated right now being a camera retailer that it seems to be that the foot in the door ground level entry level cameras are drying up so quickly now. Um, yeah. You know, for people who are keen on their photography, they want to get into it. They they understand that using their phone takes them so far, but yeah. they now want to get better quality images. They want to use higher quality glass, better lenses, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I get that, but gone are the days of the thousand dollar twin lens kit, you know, to get your foot in the door. Yeah. Um, and and at this time of year, I mean, we used to sell them hand over fist, but yeah. that's all gone out the window. So if you're comparing the A1 Mark One to the yes. A1 Mark Two, yes, what's the difference? Um, what is the difference? Eight K versus four K, maybe? No, nope, that's the same. That hasn't changed. Um, areas of autofocus. Uh, might have uh, changed. You know, you know what's noticeably the biggest difference is what's it saying? AI. Bit of AI stuff. Um has yeah. a new deeper grip and revised button layout. That's wow. It's got a new uh, it's got a slightly better EVF. That's pretty good. Okay. So it's not a massive difference. Uh it's got a, a more tilting screen. Ah, uh, now one thing I did see, uh hello to Gerald Undone, who I know watches the show. He did a brilliant review on the A1 Mark II and the screen mechanism, how yes. it flips out and rotates is is pretty nuts. Yeah, which every other camera's had for quite a while. Um, not not this system. It's a little better. Yeah, yeah it's different it's again. Back. You can actually, you can point the screen towards you, but vertically. Uh, Work out how they did that. Did they just turn the camera? You can have the camera like that, but the screen's like that and it faces you. Okay. Uh, Unique AI autofocus. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, anyway, for all you sports photographers out there, and maybe maybe high end birding photographers, go and have a look at a Sony A one Mark II. We are not sponsored by Sony, and we probably never will be. Or Canon or Nikon. Um, our dear Cam segment needs a few questions. So if you have a question for him, which gets answered by both of us generally, um, hit us up on Facebook or dsps.com.au where you can ask us a dear Cam question. The other thing you can do at dsps.com.au is you can buy us a beer. Yeah, and by, by all, we, we don't need any more beers, do we? Uh, no, I could do with one. I'm a bit thirsty. It's a hot day here in Victoria. Yeah. Hey, um, how many beers and drinks did you have in Vegas? Did you have a bit, couple of big nights at all, or what? Did uh, you the f I did on the last night. Did you? Not as big as someone who shall who is not here to defend themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've never like someone who's named Five Star. Uh, <laughs> he may or may not have had a five star visit to the porcelain yeah, bus. That's right. Buses, he went and drove one. That's right. Night. Yeah, it's not five star. It's two can. <laughs> I um I've got some videos on my phone which are hilarious. Right, which will never see the light of day. No, no. Um, and you and I went on a roller coaster. That was fun. Twice. You well, I went on to, on it twice. That was I, sensational. Oh the roller coaster was hilarious. I've been on a roller coaster for years and I loved it. That was pretty funny. Uh, that was but, funny. Yeah, speaking of beers, if you'd like to continue to support our our what are you doing? You're out of focus. I don't know. Um, uh, because I'm low light. It's my uh, my piss ant little camera's battling. But anyway, yeah. If you want to sponsor the ongoing alcoholism of this show, uh, you know what to do. Now, buying us a beer doesn't literally just buy us a beer. It also supports the channel, helps us pay for things like YouTube subscriptions and all that kind of funny stuff. So, uh, beer donations, Cam, this week. Uh, Felicity J. Or Felicity. thank you, Felicity. What a legend. Yeah, she bought us a beer. Thank um, you. I do believe number one ticket holder bought us some beers. In America, he did. Yeah, but that so doesn't shout at him. Donate him. He, 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 you know, he sort of donated him, but he was pretty. A lot good of people on. bought us beers in America. That was very, very cool. Mel was good fun, wasn't he, on the trip? Mel was outstanding fun. Um, what was now his to can you remember his nickname? Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, five star. Oh. I'll never forget it, and I'll never forget how to pronounce it. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. A bit more homework before we drive this thing right into the ground. Um, DSPS workshops for 2025. We're just going to give you a quick update on where we're at. We've got our two one-day workshops here on the Ballerine Peninsula in my backyard. 
uh, in January. January 17 is the Friday that is sold out. Sorry, folks, you can't get on that. Gone. January 18, literally, as we go to air, two places left. Um, so, and there's only 10 places available in each of those days. So yeah. they've sold out really quickly. So two spots to go on that one. Uh, our awesome Murray Mally, uh, Murray Mally workshop next year has a few places left, as does the Tarkine Cradle Mountain in August. Sorry, yeah. the Murray Mally happens at the end of March. Tarkine to Cradle happens in August. Great Ocean Road happens in May. I just thought I'd put them completely out of order. Just to yeah, I feel like that. Yeah, chronological. So, um, if you want to come with us and take awesome photos like the shots you see behind us, um, we're not, oh, no, we're not going America, to we're not going to LA. Not no, 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 no. We're going to oh, right. some pretty cool places. I had so. I haven't been doing nothing since I got back from the US, let me tell you. Um, I had a very, very awesome trip up into the Mallee, and I went out scouting your favourite location, Cameron. The lake that we went to that was crap. Lake Touchywop. And I found a fresh spot to shoot Touchywop from. So, but um, none of it's windy. It's going to really rely on the conditions, but we'll, hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll come up Trump. So the Murray Mallee one includes Lake Tyrrell, which is uh, the jewel in the crown of that tour. So um, and a sheep jump shed. on, check it out. We go back to the sheep farm? Yes, we'll be going to a shearing shed. Well, I will run a natural light portrait workshop inside a shearing shed, which was bloody awesome last time. And we'll uh, just caveat on that. It's not sheep that we're shooting. It'll be people. No. It's actually people. Um, the Great Ocean Road Workshop in May, which this year in May was a roaring success and we had a great time. Still a few places left on that. So anyway, jump on dsps.com.au, check out our workshops. Come come with us. Come and have some fun. We're yeah. going to give you give you some amazing locations to shoot and you'll take some great photos. Yep. And if not, you'll have a couple of beers and make some new friends. Absolutely. Now, Cam, yes. um, you're home for what, two, three days and then you're off again probably? <laughs> no, what's going on with you? Uh, I'm home for a week. Very and good. then I have my last tour of 2024. Yep. Uh, which is up to Kakadu to do Brilliant. a little bit of storm chasing, wildlife, landscape combination. Um, and the storms are cranking up. So oh, good. Yeah. Um so you've pushed this tour back a bit, didn't you, for to get storms? Yeah, yeah. We originally we did it about a month earlier, and then it was just nothing happened. Yep. And then I went up there earlier this year at the end of the wet season just to see what happened, and that really wasn't a good time. It was still nice, but it wasn't right. But the very first time I went to Kakadu was a mate of mine, Cam Hadlow, and I went up, did some storm chasing. And it was in the first week of December, and we got storms every day. It was really, really cool. And it looks like it's yeah. starting to do the same thing now. So, um, yeah, so it'll be a bit warm and muggy for us, but um, there'll be lots of swimming in the pool, and there'll be lots of taking epic shots of beautiful storms coming over the Kakadu National Park. Uh, we're going to do a yellow river, a yellow water cruise early morning where you get the crocodiles and all the bird life early morning. Um, do a few other little bits and pieces as well, some rock art and a few other things, which is pretty cool. That'd be awesome. And um, you're coming down here. I'm going to Cradle Mountain. All right. When are you doing that? Sure. Uh, I'm heading to Cradle Mountain, uh, <laughs> I don't know, next Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Oh, so oh, next right. week. We can so, wave it and fly past you. Pretty much. It'll be a bit like that. Um, taking the family uh, down to Cradle. So my awesome daughter finished VCE this year while I was over in the States. She finished VCE. She got a license this week as well. So um, well, she's getting happen. mobile. So we're sort of, we, we feel like we're coming to the end of these family holidays. So it's time to do yeah. a couple. So um, the kids have never seen Cradle Mountain. So uh, I thought, hey, let's go down there, and it'll be my last sort of getaway before things get silly in the shop through December. Question without notice: How the Shoot. converse? How the converse shoes go? Yeah, they went over like a wrought iron hang glider because they were the wrong size. Oh, yes. Were, were we drunk when we bought those? <laughs> uh, no, maybe a bit hungover. The okay. t-shirts were great; they went over brilliantly. But luckily, the boyfriend is the men's nine, so. The boyfriend got the shoes, and it was his birthday, so he was wrapped. So it was meant to be. It was meant to be. It worked out. Worked out a treat. I bought so. my daughter a pair of the same Converse, almost very good, uh, very good. The other day for her levers, the grade six levers dinner next month that she's oh, going to wear. Perfect. She's wearing a dress and Converse. That's my girl. Did it? Did Did they fit her? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I wasn't drunk. <laughs> perfect. Uh, okay, right. So um, don't forget to tune in next week when we have a very, very special guest coming on the show. Yeah. We won't say who it is, but we, you'll find out who it is next Where's week. Where's he so from? Tune into that. Uh, he's from San Diego, California, I think. He's not going on this show. No, I know. We, we, we're we moving up in the world, Cam, so 
I'm glad we got this. Is great work by you to get this on. That's Well, great. I'm sneaking it in. This is this. Oh, that yeah. This is um. This is going live, like hours after we've recorded. This is this is actually recorded today. This is this basically is we, live. This podcast. This is what we look like today. That's correct. This is, yeah. Mm, disheveled. That's it. That's the podcast. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Good to have you back, Cam. We will Yeah. see you for episode 144 next week. Bye for now. See you all. <laughs>